So, I mean, tax, tax and more tax or less tax, depending on who you listen to. Who are we meant to believe on this? Well, I think the problem is, <clears throat> or at least one of the problems, is essentially the voters don't believe anyone anymore. Um, I mean, the, you know, the, the surveys show that maybe one in 10 voters believes that politicians tell the truth, which is a pretty low and disastrous number. Yeah. So I think when politicians talk about this tax rise, this tax cut or whatever, people tune out, to be honest. Um, and I think we, we're therefore in a, a sort of downward spiral of who can at least pretend to look like they want to cut tax. Yeah. But I think there is a, a more fundamental issue, as you said, of is that actually what people want? Um, and is it enough? And I think those are, are two very difficult questions which haven't really been answered. Indeed. Well, let's have a look at Rishi in action, telling us how he's going to save the day. Here he is. The first rule of Labour tax rises is that you don't talk about tax rises. <laughs> But we know that the policies Labour have already announced will require them to increase taxes on working households by £2,094. My friends, families cannot afford that, and it is our job to make sure that that doesn't happen. We are cutting taxes for workers, for parents and pensioners. We will pay for permanent reductions in taxation by controlling the unsustainable rise in working age welfare that has taken off since the pandemic. National insurance tax cuts are already worth £900 to the average worker. And we will keep cutting taxes in the coming years, meaning that by 2027, we will have halved national insurance to 6%. That is a tax cut, my friends, worth £1,300 to the average worker. Well, there he is. I mean, that's the promise, uh, Elliot. Uh, that is the, uh, the the Rishi Sunak way of doing it. When Keir Starmer announces his manifesto, are we? I, mean, we, I imagine we're going to see something fairly similar. I mean, he'll, he'll, I think he might stop short of perhaps uh, promising tax cuts because he might see that as the ultimate bear trap now. But the mood music is going to be you're going to be better well, off with us, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, Keir Starmer will do what he and Rachel Reeves have been doing for a long time, which is make very specific pledges about taxes or duties that they won't increase uh, and then say nothing about overall taxation. And, you know, there is a fundamental problem for both parties here, which is that the tax burden is at its highest since the 1940s. And yet nobody thinks that public services are working. So I don't think there is any more a simple link between just spending a bit more money and things getting better. Um, and I, I think th that represents some of the, the deeper problems about the way we govern this country, which aren't being addressed in this campaign, and we're never really going to be. Uh, national insurance is a good example. I mean, when Jeremy Hunt first raised the idea of, of scrapping it altogether, for a start, he wasn't talking about doing it any time soon. It was a sort of long-term ambition. He said it wouldn't be paid for by uh, borrowing, it wouldn't be paid for by welfare or spending cuts. But he was saying that this is something which we, we should not really be using as a form of taxation because national insurance is to an extent a scam. It's not what it was meant to be when it was introduced in 1911, which is something to pay for welfare. It's now essentially just another piece of taxation. Well, maybe it's down to the Lib Dems after all of that, possibly, Elliot, because uh, they have. And in fact, we know that the leader of the Lib Dems, Ed Davey, doesn't do anything unless he's either being shot down a slide, falling in the water or on a theme park ride. So he used the Thorpe Park teacups to announce that his party or how his party plans to grow the economy. Let's have a look. Mental health well-being of our kids is really important. What about the economy? What are you doing on the economy? Yeah, we've got to get it growing again, and that, that will uh, that will be helped by cutting the NHS waiting list, also by getting a much better trade deal with Europe, and by investing in the skills of our young people. So, you know, we've got great policies for the economy, including the cost of living. Uh, the, the possibly the most extraordinary, although maybe welcoming in some ways, Elliot, that, you know, this is the way our Lib Dem leader has decided to run his campaign in theme parks and associated places. Um, of course, that's his ambition. We learned today the UK economy flatlined in April, so he's got his work cut out. Well, <clears throat> 
It's interesting. It's, I don't think there's anyone who seriously thinks that Ed Davey is in any way going to be called upon to be part of any government anytime soon. And therefore, anything he says really is just what he would like to happen in an ideal world. At the same time, he's clearly having a blast. And it's actually quite quite nice to see a politician who is obviously enjoying himself because neither Rishi Sunak nor Sir Keir Starmer seems to be particularly. So there is at least some light relief in somebody who is living his best life.